We've got four parts in the song right now, and I think what we want to do is pull up a sound in our fifth group, uh, like a sample, just kind of show you how to time stretch it, maybe find some type of percussive element, um, and get it to fit in with our track. Sampling is a really cool way to add depth in, you know, musical ideas to your projects. People will sample vocals. They sample off of, you know, old vinyl. You can sample from live instrument recordings. There's a real powerful sampler in Machine, and it lets us do all the things we would want to do with a sampler as far as chopping it and slicing it, time stretching it. So what we're going to do is actually try to find some type of loop in here. Machine does come with some, some loops, so we're going to go to our fifth group here, group E, go to Browse, and I'm going to go to Samples, and I'm actually going to look for loops. Um, and I actually want more like percussion loops. I'm just going to try to find something that's going to match with our song. We have one down here that I'm going to load in. So it's just a real basic kind of percussion loop. What we're going to want to do with this, first off, is is go into the sampler and try to try to find a good place for this sound to loop. Not all samples that you work with are going to be already chopped into a perfect loop. If it was, it'd be a lot easier because all we'd have to do is time stretch it and we'd be fine. A lot of times you have to kind of create the loop yourself, find the starting and the end point. When I go into sampling, sometimes yours will be on record to start with, so you just want to go over to edit. And all we're doing right now is editing this current sample. When I, sl when I hit the pad, you can see it plays through the sample. But what I want to do is kind of find a place for it to loop, or find a logical downbeat to have it end on so that it'll, it'll be able to loop nicely in our project. So kind of listening to it, I can hear there's a second downbeat here right in the middle, right around here in the project. What's cool is that you can actually zoom way in and way out uh, to, to get your edits perfectly using the two knobs here. We can zoom left and right or zoom in and out. So what I want to do is actually go to my ending point here. I want to back this up. And it seemed like it was right around here. Right around here is where that second downbeat was. So if I replayed it, like that, it would sound like a loop. I am going to zoom in, though, just to make sure we got our, our marker right at the right spot. So I'm actually going to slide it over just a little bit and get it right before that second downbeat. Now, Machine could play this way, but I do need to probably time stretch this a little bit. Um, this loop, as it stands, if I was to play it along, might be just a little bit fast. So it's a little bit, a little bit fast. Not by much. It actually kind of works out pretty good. But before I time stretch anything, I want to go ahead and do what's called truncating. And that, what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of all this stuff here on the right that we're not using within this sample. So there's a button up here at the top. We can go through our different sampling options and different tools within our sampler. And I'm going to go to one that says truncate. And I'm going to select apply. When I do that, it's going to strip out everything else on the right there that we weren't using. It would do the same thing if I had selected a different play part and a different end part. It would get rid of everything on the outsides here. So truncating is kind of how you tidy up your sample and make sure you're just working with what you need to work with. Now that I got it truncated, I can go into the time stretch and hit settings, and I get my different time stretch settings. Now, it seemed to work out with this one that Machine analyzed it basically as 80 beats per minute, which is what our project's at. So we don't really need to do a whole lot of stretching. If this was a sample that was analyzed as a loop at 100 beats per minute, then we could time stretch it down to 80 so that it would match our BPM of our project. There's also different modes where you can uh, just speed it up or slow it down by a percentage. But luckily for us right now, we're pretty much right on uh, with our 80 beats per minute. So our sample is ready to go. So I'm going to go back out of the sampler to our main menu. We got this here. Now, one thing that you would sometimes run into with samples is they will stack on top of each other. If, you, if, I, if I hit this multiple times, it keeps playing that sample and all the way through, but it's stacking it. And sometimes it can get kind of messy sounding. 
and you got a bunch of them playing. So what I always like to do is to go to the polyphony, and that's going to be found in our sound settings. So as long as I have sound selected up here, and I have the sound that I want, and this goes for any sound, even if I go over to my group A, where my drums are, same thing. You'll see a lot of them are already set to one polyphony. They do that on purpose so that if the sound triggers, it's not layering on top of itself. So I'm going to actually go to my group E where I got my loop, and I'm going to put my polyphony down to one, or legato. Either one, it's going to only allow it to play one instance of that sample at a time. There's other things we could do with this sample too. I could actually tune it, pitch it up and down, do some reverse stuff. So we could kind of experiment with maybe reversing it. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to record this loop triggering on the downbeat so that it'll keep looping it over and over again. So we're going to make a pattern. Pattern, pattern one. Give myself my count in. I'm going to turn my reverse off for now, but we'll see how it sounds with it on. Hit shift and record. I'm going to hear my count in. So right now it's just playing one time through. So I might actually want to add it in doubly so that it keeps playing the whole time. So let me do. All right, so I'm gonna quantize that just to make sure that those downbeats are right on. And now we can experiment with, turn my metronome off, experiment with uh, putting reverse on. So it doesn't really work in this project. Maybe if I shifted where the sample came in, it would work. But we'll leave it just like that. It sounds good. All right, so now we got some samples. We got bass lines, chords, pads, and drums. Everything we need for a song. Next video, we're going to add some effects to it. Really bring it to life.